Okay, so some examples of hit that you could do other than Tabata's 20 seconds work, 20, 10 seconds rest. So you could also do 10 to 15 seconds of work, 15 to 30 seconds rest, you know, that would be decent. You could do four to five seconds of work. To me, that's a little short, but you, you know, if you're like on a bike, you kind of don't want to stop after five seconds because you barely got going, <laughs> right? That, that would definitely be something to work on your start-stop mode, but I don't know. St stopping after only five seconds, my brain, that would kind of suck me out a little bit. <laughs> but you could do that. There actually has been a study based on four to five seconds of work and 60 to 90 seconds of rest. I mean, can you imagine working for five seconds, resting for a minute, for 30 minutes? I'll just be like, five seconds, So yeah, for me personally, that would not work. <laughs> but maybe maybe it'll work for you, who knows? <laughs> you might wanna give it a try. Also, when you're doing your rest, I would recommend that you don't stop cold, you know, because your body could freeze up because you're asking a lot of your body to just start, go all out, and then stop. And then your body's still in like continuous mode and your muscles are still in contraction mode and they could just be like, boop, I'm frozen now. I have a cramp, that kind of thing. Just, ah. <laughs> so don't stop cold. If you're sprinting uh, on the beach, <laughs> keep moving, walk slowly <laughs> or step touch. Like I, I do sometimes step touch, step touch, step touch. At least your feet are moving still, you know, get your arms going if you can. <laughs> put your arms up, don't put your head down. You put your head down, blood, too much blood could rush to your head and you could pass out anyway. Yeah, <laughs> so just keep moving. You know, if you're cycle sprinting, maybe sit down and pedal slowly instead, you know, but keep it going. That way blood is continuously pumping through your legs and bad things won't happen. <laughs> Let me just put it that way, or they're less likely to happen. You could do 15 to 60 seconds of work, 45 to 120 seconds of rest. You could do 30 seconds of work and four minutes of resting. You could do eight seconds of work, 120 seconds of resting. Again, to me, that's a little just, I'm waiting. <laughs> Still waiting. <laughs> you could do five seconds of work, 40 seconds of resting. That seems a little bit better, you know, than, than waiting a good minute or 90 seconds. It's like, uh. You could do 30 seconds of work and four and a half minutes of resting. Again, that's just a little to me. Unless, of course, you're going like all out, then you just kind of, you need the rest, you know? But to me, four and a half minutes kind of is a full recovery. So for me, that's a little bit less like hit, like interval training and more just the guys at the gym. Sometimes I see guys lifting really heavy weights, maybe not even that heavy, but acting like it's heavy. Ah! can hear you all the way across the gym downstairs, you know, and then you see me doing my heavy stuff. I get some stairs because I'm in the boys section. <laughs> the boys section. <laughs> and, you know, I'm basically silent. Yeah. <laughs> so screaming. Is that really necessary, guys? Come on now. You know, all you're doing is intimidating women who you might be interested in attracting or something, but you ain't gonna attract anybody by screaming like that. Other hit methods you could do, 60 seconds of work, 75 seconds of rest. Mm, might be a little long if you're going at like 100% of your capability, like, whew, I can last 30 seconds. Sometimes longer, sometimes like 15 seconds because my body's like, oh, I have not recovered from the last time and you're expecting me to run now again. <gasps> and these are all considered intervals. So again, you can pick and choose whichever ones you like. 
I might like different ones, you might like different ones, I might not like the ones you like, and you might not like the ones that I like, and the ones that you like might not work for you, right? You know, if something hasn't been working for you for like, let's say you're doing this, you're you're giving it your, your all, and your body hasn't changed for a month or two, don't wait a year, and your body has not changed, or your performance hasn't changed, or you, you know, you're stalemating, I would suggest that maybe that method doesn't particularly work for you. You know, let's be honest with ourselves, right? I have to be honest with myself too. So I track a lot of metrics on myself every single day and to see what works with me. Sometimes I feel, you know, you know, the perceived exertion thing. Sometimes I feel like it's working for me, but my numbers on the other hand are going the other direction. <laughs> so it's like, hmm, I like it, but it's kind of not working. I think it's time to change it up. You could do four minutes of work, two minutes of resting at 90%. <sighs> Talk about endurance. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's like those super awesome ultra marathon runners. I mean, ooh, wow. Those guys are amazing. <laughs> you could do eight seconds of work, 12 seconds of resting, four minutes of work, three minutes of resting. So, you know, pick and choose, experiment with yourself, always learn from yourself, learn from your past experiences, find out what has worked for you in the past, see if it'll work for you again. It might work for you again, or it might not. Or another variable, you could be doing something different with your diet, your lifestyle, you know, so it's important to track everything that you're doing. As tedious as it can feel sometimes, it's kind of the best way to see your progress. Now, some of the benefits of HIT versus steady state exercise. Now, as I mentioned before, steady state exercise is not changing anything when you work out. So, like, if you're biking, and you just go under the same pace. Just keep biking, just keep biking. <laughs> Maybe you're flipping through a magazine as you're biking. Now, not necessarily at that pace. You know, you could be going pretty hard, right? But you're just, you're never changing. You're never sprinting and then backing off and then sprinting again and backing off or maybe standing up on the bike and then sitting down squatting on the bike uh leaning forward on the bike you know that kind of thing you're not changing anything so like maybe you're just sitting down on the bike but you're never altering your movement or your energy exertion right so that would be steady state and some of the benefits of hit over steady state, you could decrease your skin fold fat. So if you've ever worked with a trainer, you'll know that one of the first things that a good trainer should do is to take your skin fold measurements. Now skin fold is a manual way of testing your body fat level. It's basically where somebody pinches the places that you don't want them to pinch. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants anybody to pinch there. <laughs> So you could have them pinch you right in the tricep. Some tests even pinch you in the bicep. They could get you on the side, get you on the belly, the tummy right there, you know? <laughs> some get you in the back, some get you on the thighs. So it's kind of like, mm, don't pinch me there. That's probably where they're gonna pinch you. <laughs> so that's a skin fold test also known to personal trainers in the fitness world as calipers. So if you ever hear the caliper test, it's these big, scary lobster claw, pinchy looking thing. Those are body fat calipers to do a skin fold test and pinch you. So it could also decrease your ab fat, trunk fat. So trunk is your core. Basically, you look like a tree trunk, right? It's just that right there. <laughs> your visceral fat, your total fat mass. If you've ever taken an anatomy class, you'll know that underneath this beautiful skin that we have is a layer of fat. It's a lot thicker in certain places than others. Like, you know, what you term your trouble spots. 
unless it's in your abs, then it's ab fat or trunk fat or butt fat or inner thigh fat or anyways. <laughs> That kind of brings to mind a movie that I saw with Jennifer Aniston. I believe it was called Just Go With It. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> it, it, I think it's Just Go With It, where she's like, and look at this, look at this. I've never had this before. What is this? Ah! <laughs> I love that scene. That's like my favorite scene of all time, almost all time. Yeah, yeah, with her, that's probably my favorite scene. <laughs> You could reduce your waist and your hip circumferences. Could reduce your weight. You could reduce your average weekly training time, right? I mean, who has time to work out all day, every day, 24 seven, unless you get paid for it. Or maybe if you're an Olympic sports athlete, or if you're a bikini competitor, you make time. That's what, <laughs> that's how you have time. You make time. <laughs> okay, so anyways, you could decrease your average weekly training time because hey, we, we all need a life. Some health benefits could include systolic blood pressure, you know, lowering your systolic blood pressure. That's a good thing. You could decrease the breakdown of glycogen. It basically means there's more fat being used instead. You could also reduce your fasting plasma insulin levels. It can increase your VO2 max. Now remember, VO2 max is your maximal oxygen consumption, right? How much oxygen you can use or is available to use anyway. <laughs> it can increase your fat-free mass. So what is that? Well, in your body, take away your fat and everything that's left is fat-free mass, so to speak. Your water, bones, muscles, ligaments, skin, all them good stuff. You can increase your exercise capacity like what you're capable of. So your training power, how hard you can squat something or how much energy you can put into something. It can increase your cardio fitness like I was talking about earlier. It'll help your endurance. It could increase your feelings of energy and health perception, right? Now when you exercise, what do you feel first? Besides the soreness of the pain, you could feel healthy and energized. I mean, I know I feel energized, so that's why I like to work out in the morning. I really don't like to work out at nighttime, but I do because I'm on a specific plan right now that I shall divulge with you later. <laughs> so I like to work out in the morning because it gives me just this burst of energy to just tackle the day. It will increase your exercise energy expenditure, how much energy you can exert during exercise. It can increase your post-exercise energy expenditure. Ooh, that's a mouthful. And it could increase your post-exercise fat oxidation. How much fat you burn some health benefits like insulin sensitivity, muscle mitochondrial capacity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now you don't have to be an active person already to do HIT. okay? So there have been tests, many tests done with obese individuals, normal weight, young and old, er, just old, er, <laughs> or younger at heart, right? There have also been tests done with active and sedentary individuals, so you have no excuse not to exercise. Okay, so how does all this information relate to helping you with your bikini body? Let's put it this way. You won't see any sexy muscle definition to show off in your bikini, be it shredded abs or a poppin' booty with a layer of fat covering it like a blanket, right? So HIT can help with that. I'm Jessica Young, your bikini fitness trainer, and thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I love talking about all things bikini with you, and if you have any more questions or comments or concerns or topics you want me to talk about, make sure to post them below, right? And also, get pre-registered for the launch of my brand new bikini body water workout program at jessicayoungfit.com. Thanks for being here. And I will see you next Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another bikini blog episode. Bye for now, bikini lovers. Mwah!